Hello and welcome back. I'm Gail King with CBS This Morning. Entertainment Tonight co-host Kevin Frazier is with me today, but we're across the street right now from Windsor Castle, where right now about 600 very lucky people are guests at the wedding reception for Prince Harry and his wife, that never gets old, his wife, Meghan. Earlier, as you know, they gathered in St. George's Chapel to witness the wedding ceremony. We'll go now to Mark Phillips, who is standing just outside the chapel. Hey, Mark, good morning. Good morning. Well, we've been saying it over and over again this morning. This was a wedding like no other for the obvious reason that Meghan was a bride, a royal bride like no other. And this wedding really had to tick a number of different boxes, some of them overlapping uh, considerations and some of them quite disparate considerations. It had to seem traditional and satisfy the royal traditionalists. So it was here at St. George's Chapel. It was here uh, in Windsor Castle. All of the royals up to and including the queen uh, were there, of course, and it had to do what royal weddings have done here for 500 years and for, and for good reason. But because Meghan is who Meghan is, uh, an American bride, it had to also reflect culturally where she came from. And so they planned the ceremony that really did straddle the ocean, for that matter, from, uh, from America to here. It had traditional hymns, traditional prayers, the Archbishop of Canterbury, but it also had the Bishop of the American Episcopalian Church and music, classic and modern as well. Anyway, this is what it looked like. It was a marriage of split-second choreography as only the House of Windsor can do. A vintage Rolls-Royce leaves a hotel a little over nine miles from the castle. Inside, a glimpse of a woman wearing a veil and a tiara, sharing a smile with her mother. At the castle, two princes in uniform march and step across the grounds. An ancient royal and religious rite with a distinct modern twist is about to play out. Doria Raglan, the mother of the bride, had switched cars and arrived at the chapel. The senior royals followed, Charles next in line to the throne with Camilla, the queen, the betting was she'd wear green, and green it was. And Philip, now 96, and on his first public appearance since his recent hip operation, and moving well. But this was the arrival the world was waiting for. Meghan Markle, now the Duchess of Sussex, after her new title was bestowed by the Queen, was about to answer the other big question of the day, what about the dress? It was, to quote the palace, a dress that epitomizes a timeless, minimal elegance. The designer, Claire Waite Keller, a British woman who now heads the French fashion house Givenchy. In the absence for health reasons of Meghan's father, her future father-in-law escorted her up the aisle. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, performed the ceremony. Will you love her? But American Episcopalian bishop, the most reverend Michael Curry, delivered the sermon in his own style. Two young people fell in love, and we all showed up. So darling, darling, the music occasionally departed from the norm, but the vows were traditional, and so was the kiss. In the end, the ceremony had a lot of different people to satisfy, and it satisfied everybody. Gail? Okay. Okay. All right, Mark, thank you very much. That was a nice recap of what we've seen so far.